Welcome back. I got a 60 gallon compressor. It's supposed to kick off at 135 PSI, but it's kicking off at 120. And so I'm gonna show you how to adjust that on these pressure switches. What I need to do this job is a Phillips screwdriver to take off your pressure switch cover, a security torx focus, a security torx and some sort of pick tool, uh, center punch, something with a nice sharp point. And now it's probably best if you uh, turn off the breaker to your compressor while you're doing this job because you've got two hot connections right there. And uh, if you touch one of those, it's gonna light right up. So we're gonna go turn that off right now. Voila. So on this Ingersoll Rand compressor, uh, it came with a fairly standard pressure switch here. Um, you can see here it's kicking off at about 120, 125 PSI. We should be getting 135. And inside this pressure switch, all pressure switch have one of these pressure bolts. And on this one in particular, uh, you can see it's a security Torx. And it's also got, as I found, it'll focus. It's also got like a little ring in there, if you can see that. There's like a little uh, little ring pressed on there that keeps it from being turned by a security Torx. So we're just gonna pop that bad boy out of there. Right along one of these splines of the Torx and with our pick tool, just pop out that itty bitty little ring. It's just a little rubber ring. And now we can get in there with the, uh, the security Torx and we can turn that screw. So let me get my bit driver. I found my bit driver. So we're gonna turn this just, I don't know, about an eighth of a turn clockwise. And what that's gonna do is increase the uh, pressure on the pressure spring and should hopefully cause it to cut off just a little bit later. So let's go turn the breaker back on and fire this up. We're a little bit closer now. That's closer to 130. So let's give it another eighth of a turn. I'll note that I'm running back and forth to the breaker each time I do this, just to make sure that I don't electrocute myself here. So close, another small turn. After that last small turn, uh, the pressure switch still doesn't want to latch. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually drain the tank until it kicks on and uh, and then let it come back up naturally and we'll see where it rests. And there you can see we're just under the 135 mark and given the margin of error on these cheap little gauges, I'm gonna call that good enough. Um, one thing to note with these pressure switches is anytime you, uh, anytime you turn them up, you also raise the lower cut-in pressure. Now, when I got this compressor from the store, uh, its lower cut in was about 90, 95 pounds, and it would top out at 120. And so now we're seeing the normal range uh, where it's cutting in at uh, about 100 and cutting out at 135. So that's just perfect. Now, if in the process of testing and purging your tank and everything else, you didn't lose your little bushing, you could replace this now. now of course, normally we would do this by turning off the breaker first, but I'm just being really careful. So now our little bushing's back in there, and the warranty gods will never know any better. Put our cover back on, and call it a day. If you found this helpful and would like to see more shop tips, tool repair, and various other shop projects, please like and subscribe, and always, thank you for watching.